Hello and welcome to ligand field theory part two. Today we want to look at the bonding in a transition metal compound. So I give you an example. Hexa ammonium cobalt three plus. So in this compound we have six ammonia ligands surrounding the cobalt 3 plus central metal. If we want to look at the bondings, our first task is to construct the group orbitals that come from the six ligands. Okay, last time we talked about group orbitals already. Now what does this mean? The ammonia molecule has one lone pair electron. This lone pair electron is responsible for the bonding to the cobalt 3 plus. So we focus on this one orbital of ammonia. We don't care about the rest of the molecule of the ligand. So now we have to combine these six ligands together to six group orbitals. The first group orbital always should be that we have all the single orbitals in the same phase. They have the same sign. In this case, we draw the octahedron without the metal in the middle. So I just draw the lone pair. So we have six lone pairs orbitals in the same phase. They are all plus, if you like. Okay, this is group orbital number one at the lowest energy. Now how do we get the other five? We have to think how to split this molecule with a node. First with one node in a symmetric way. So the first way we could split the molecule is by a plane perpendicular that goes through these four ends here. So then I would get something like this. In the middle I have a node plane. And these four orbitals are zero because they are in the node. And a node means there is a change of sign. That means I have here plus and minus. And in the same way, I can split this molecule three times. Here I use the XZ axis uh, plane, sorry. Now the next one would be this plane, XY plane. And number three, the paper plane, XZ. So I can get another one that looks like this. Plane is here, and the last one is in the paper. So one orbital is here in the front, and the one is here behind, behind the paper, if you like. So I get three combinations of orbitals that have one node plane, one change in uh, the sign in a symmetric way. Now I got four group orbitals and I am still missing two. I have six single orbitals and I have to construct six group orbitals. Now the next step would be to find two node planes in this molecule. Now this is a little bit more difficult. One could be the plane that intersects the axis, the two axes here. So one node plane would be like this and the second like this. So the two ligands on the z axis are in the node plane, they disappear and these four change their phase. So that would look something like this. All these four Got different, got uh, different signs. 
I have two times from here to here and from here to here change in sign. Two changes in sign. And the last one, number six, is even more tricky. I can split the molecule like here and here, perpendicular to the z-axis. So that would give me something like this. I get one on the top, one on the bottom, and in the middle I get four small. So I have two changes in sign from here to here and from here to here. And this gives me my six group orbitals. After I have my six group orbitals of ammonia, the next point is how to combine it with the central metal orbitals. Now if we look at the pictures, we can already imagine which orbitals here fit with which there. The lowest one obviously has a total symmetric behavior that fits with the S from here. So what we can find is a combination of the 4S with this one. Okay, we have an antibonding. I will not draw it to make it easier. So all the electrons are on this side. The 4s is empty, so I can put two electrons here. That's my first interaction. Now if you look at the group here with the three different combinations, plus minus, plus minus, and plus minus, we can find that this combination fits together with these three here, with the p orbitals. The p orbital in the middle can overlap with these two outside in the perfect way. And these three have the same energy, these three have the same energy, so I can assume I get again three orbitals. Again, antibonding also. Three orb molecular orbitals with the same energy. Again, all the electrons come from the ligand. In the 4p are no electrons in the cobalt. So, again, all the electrons coming from the ligand. Now, the last two are more most interesting because now I have two nodes and two nodes in the group orbitals fit with some d electron d orbital sorry if you look closely then this group orbital will fit with the x square minus y square orbital okay let me check here so this orbital has also two node planes so it will overlap with this one. And the set square orbital will fit with the other one, which has also two node planes. So if I put this one here in the middle, it will perfectly match the ligand orbitals. That means these two find a partner in the x square minus y square and again these orbitals are have electrons from the ligand now all the 12 electrons from the ligand are now in these bonding orbitals Okay, now if you see there is still there are still some orbitals from the metal that have no partner. In this case, are the remaining three d orbitals, and these three d orbitals have no partner. And this is the x y x z and y z. Okay. 
Okay, and I have to draw here the antibonding case as well. Okay, now how many electrons coming from the cobalt 3 plus? When we check the periodic table, we find that cobalt 3 plus should have six D electrons. Now I have to fill these three orbitals with six electrons. And these coming from the metal and they are non-bonding. So that's the whole MO diagram for the cobalt 3 plus with six ammonia. So the complete MO diagram for an ML6 complex would look like this. On the left side we have the D electrons of the metal, the S electrons and the P electrons. S and P are empty. Only in the D block we have electrons from the metal. And on the right side we have six ligand group orbitals. We combine the orbitals of the six ligands around the center. We get six group orbitals and all these are full of electrons. Means we have 12 electrons here. In the case of cobalt 3 plus I have six electrons in the D level. Okay, again, we have the combination with the S, two electrons. We have the combination with the P, so we have a set of three fitting together, also full of electrons from the ligands. And then two of the D orbitals fit together with the highest energy levels here. that have two node planes. Again, electrons coming from the ligand. Now this part is especially interesting and hopefully this will remind you on crystal field theory. These three orbitals from the metal are non-bonding. They have no partner on the ligand side. And the six electrons from the metal are going into these D orbitals. Sorry. So these here are the D6 electrons. And this picture here, this should look familiar to you from the crystal field theory. Now we have again this octahedral splitting picture, 3 over 2. But now we have some more information. We know that these two are not just D orbitals, but they are antibonding. These orbitals are antibonding. That means if I put electrons in this higher level, I make the bond between ligand and metal weaker. So the more electrons I put into this level, the weaker will be the bond between the metal and the ligands.